want to speak on waiting upon God for his strength. Most of us hate waiting. Whether we are waiting for traffic light or be in the queue to pay the bill. We want what we want and we want it now. That's our attitude. However, God has created us to live differently. God wants us to grow in spiritual strength and health to live. He wants us to wait upon him patiently. Psalms 27, 14 states, Wait for the Lord, be strong. Let your heart be, well, let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for the Lord. And uh, Psalms 31, 24 says, Be strong, let your heart take courage, all who wait for the Lord. One of the important exhortations of the Bible is the call to wait upon the Lord. And Old Testament emphasis is clearly on daily walk and need to walk with on the Lord and his providential care in the pressure of our life. As we see in the New Testament, the focus is on the promise of Christ's return, uh, James 5-7. The emphasis here is most, uh, or all the, the words in the New Testament are for waiting for the coming of Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ will come back. She, he came in this world. He lived for the humanity. He died on the cross for the sins of the people. He has gone and he will come back again. But people don't believe. When Jesus was born in this world, before he could born, it was written that he is going to born, be born. But nobody believed at the right time Jesus is born. In the same way, Jesus told, I will come back. Many will not believe, but he will come back one day. He is coming back not to forgive our sins or cleanse us. He is coming back to take the people who are living sinless life. Okay, so that is in the New Testament, that is the waiting upon the Lord. Isaiah 40, 31 states, Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount up with wings like eagles, they shall run and not be weary, they shall walk, not faint. As New Testament would put it, be strong in the Lord and in his power and his might, Ephesians 6, 10. Isaiah 40, 30 states, even youth shall faint and be weary and young men shall exhausted, but those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. Here it mentions youth. Youth are Mentioned in the text as adolescents, they are the ones that are in the prime time of their physicality. And uh, if, they, if we were to choose uh, to, uh, to go for uh, Olympic or something like to compete anything, normally we will choose, people will choose young people young men mentioned in the scripture are those who slightly here it is telling young and the youth and young so young men slightly are the older than the youth they are the symbols of strength and vigor you put them uh, to hard physical labor they would go on and on they have that strength but god says uh, about even the strongest man will grow weary and faint their energy is not endless. They too will grow weary and they will faint. The strong young men and the, and the young men, they are the adolescents, they will all utterly fail. Okay, so the message is clear. The man at his uh, strongest is weak to face the challenges of this world. He is helpless. He may be strong enough. Boldly he may be strong, but that's, that strong person also cannot face the challenges of this world. We are inherently weak. We need to understand that this physical picture points a spiritual picture, the spiritual picture of weariness and stumbling. Our human spirit has strength, but uh, human spirit is not strong enough to face all the challenges of this world. It is true that the strong man in this world would, uh, will fall without God's strength. People trust in their willpower and pride themselves to do anything that they set in their mind as human being. We are weak and we are 
prone to stumble in our plans and heart desires and we face the enemies of this world and we face the enemies of our soul we grow weary and tired in the battle against our enemies hardship keep coming to every human being and the truth is that human being cannot swim uh, by uh, themselves their life struggles we need the strength from almighty this strength is not physical this is the spiritual strength we need uh, our strength to be renewed bible is telling renew your strength daily we have to renew our uh, strength to face each new day's challenges that is to say we need our strength to be renewed we uh, read uh, or we need a new kind of strength each day you only can understand how your each days isn't it every day a new challenge will come each new day each new challenge will come and uh, so we need the strength from almighty god gives us that strength through christ spirit those who join with the lord are one in christ so our spirit is weak that is the reason jesus christ has died on the cross and jesus will give his his spirit to those who accept him first corinthians 6:17 and he does and when he gives us that strength we bible says we will mount up with wings as eagles though through every day struggles without god's spirit in man kind man dies and return to the dust and without god's spirit in man kind nobody can attain salvation people will tell many ways to salvation but without god's spirit in man he cannot attain salvation that is the reason jesus christ has come in this world he died and he has given us the spirit of god so think about eagles what a beautiful picture think about eagle that with little effort soars high into the sky and then for hours on end that eagle can glide far above the earth eagle is a symbol of strength and power like eagle we can we can rise above the problems that's what god is counseling us this picture of god's people this this is the picture of god's people who are strengthened by god but if we were not uh, enough and if this uh, the test goes on uh, to describe the truth that when it says that those who run shall not be weary and they shall walk they shall not faint it teaches that god god will strengthen us so that in daily life when we run or walk and we will not grow weary now that's not saying that god's people that is who are joined with jesus christ where will not go weary all of us experience the spiritual weariness and uh, some to a greater degree sometimes some people some of us have a lot of struggle from morning till evening anywhere we go we will have struggle and we will not be able to have even little peace such days also we we go through so some to a greater degree than others experience this weariness with all pressures of life sometimes we wonder whether we can even go on and god's people will grow weary and that's why so we will face such days that is the reason god has given this exhortation those who wait upon the lord okay so the solution for our weary days are what we have to wait upon the lord that's what i am going to teach you today so god's people will grow weary and that's why we have this text they that wait on the lord shall grow weary and ephesians 6 commands us to be strong in the lord and his mighty power as long as we are waiting upon the lord and as long as we have his strength even we uh we can we can understand the strength to go on it is not like human strength this is divine strength if you experience only you can understand this strength so this text is teaching us that we ought to seek our strength from god daily people learn to pray for the blessings of blessings from god isn't it whoever has got you you may say that that person is godly or or whatever he is a spiritual person but what does he do he is going and praying for the blessings of the the for him isn't it but people don't know to pray for god's strength to live righteously so then we can face day to day we have to live a righteous life 
then only we can face the day so we can face uh, the day to day battles that every child runs up against with this strength young young man can face the peer pressures of the temptation i will always tell when adolescence when the teen then everything start popping up isn't it their character so with this strength they can control they will be in the world they will think they cannot control themselves youngsters they can control for that they should know those are sins otherwise they will think that is world it they have to enjoy but the enjoyment only those sinful enjoyments if you come to jesus christ only totally you will understand it is sin so with that strength of god the wife can submit to husband in the lord even though the husband doesn't love her as he ought to and with that strength from god the husband can love his wife and give himself to his wife as commanded in ephesians 5:25 uh, even if she is uh, not so lovable with this strength from god parents can discipline their children to walk in god's ways that is the commandment god says parents should walk parents should discipline the children to walk in god's way for that husband and wife should stand together single parent cannot do this work it is a commandment so with this strength pair so children can listen to the parents and correct themselves and with that strength from god children can submit to the parents and walk in god's ways and and submit to them even when their parents show forth their failures with that strength we can overcome our daily setbacks disappointments and discouragements and feeling of hopelessness and with that strength we can say no to many of our worldly pleasures and passions of our lustful flesh which are against god's will so no one can live peacefully or face life challenges by human power they will not show they will tell no i am fine i am fine you ask anyone i am fine they will never admit their weakness or what they are going through that is their pride okay prideful people will always say that they are fine nothing wrong with them. especially you go with jesus christ jesus christ will give you strength if you tell enough they are super fine they will tell so we need a source of all the strength and power from god almighty the strength and the power should be with us always and we get it when we ask in prayer jesus is assuring us the strength from god almighty through holy spirit and he explained by the comparison taken from earthly parents he said in luke 11 11 through 13 which one of you if his son ask for bread will give him a stone or if he ask for a fish will he give him a serpent or if uh, of or uh, if you then who are evil know how to give the good gift to your children how much more will your father who is in heaven will give you the holy spirit to those who ask him we as parents those who are parents they know that they will give the best to their children isn't it and bible is asking jesus is telling you are evil still you give the best to your children then how much more heavenly father will give you then why we are not getting we are not asking we are not expecting human physical strength is equated often bodily uh, built and aesthetic appearance health and fitness centers have sprung up everywhere promising shape for the body and fuller life people are spending so much money in physical exercise to be strong and fit and gyms sports and physical fitness centers are making huge money as it is a big business so the question is is uh, the question is does physical fitness equal to mental strength never mental strength only god can give mental strength is the power to live this life successfully friends understand that so the bible agrees fitness is important to our physical body but says physical exercise doesn't profit the soul for salvation first timothy 4:8 says for while uh bodily training is of some value godliness is value in every day as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come it is fine to discipline our yes we have to discipline our physical body we have to keep it in fit and strong yes we do have to go to gym 
all those exercise if you can and uh, and you have to do the exercise but we will and at the same time but we should understand that 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 strength will not help us to face the life's challenges so you see people in our beauty obsessed culture who are health nuts eat all proper foods they take vitamins minerals and uh, uh, they work out to keep their body in shape in fact they are foolish because they are only uh, maintaining their physical strength not their mental strength so they cannot extend their life indefinitely they are going to die and suffer in hell for sure they don't have that understanding eternity is a fact no one can deny that we should discipline ourselves for the purpose of godliness godliness will promise a good life in this world as well as eternal life many of you i have heard that many of you will tell that who has seen hell and heaven so they think enjoy this world and die okay and today we are believing in jesus christ have we seen jesus christ no how do we believe we know it is true isn't it and it is not just a bias ideas that we it is true i mean it is that what we are believing i as i told you about the birth of the jesus christ it has prophesied much earlier than his birth and he has born and people have seen that is what is testified in the bible it is not some story about jesus christ is written in the bible people have seen jesus christ life and by the by the power of the holy spirit it is written in recorded in the bible and jesus said i will come back and jesus said i am the way i am the truth okay and jesus said there is hell and heaven if you believe in jesus christ you have to believe all what he says i am the way to heaven so never have that doubt that many of you think that who was seen then why do you believe in jesus christ you cannot ignore the fact many even atheists say that yes jesus was a good man but they believe in jesus isn't it he was not just a good man he was a god himself God sent his son into this world he died on the cross he has risen and he is still living and he is he is coming back to take the people who are living with his power to live a holy life hallelujah so eternity is a fact no one can deny and we should discipline ourselves for the purpose of godliness and godliness will promise a good life in this world as well as life after death a man must renounce all his sins and it is a labor daily exercise is needed for the godliness and for the spiritual health and godliness assures good health as well as wealth third uh, john 2 and psalms 112 1 and 2 like every day we require food and we know that if we don't take enough food we cannot sustain this life so we delight in the delicious food isn't it the same way we should understand our spirit needs soul food to be strong emotionally emotional strength is so much important for everyone not just for christians for everyone emotional strength you get only when you obey god and live what you have to obey what god is telling you to obey how good character that's all he is telling know how to treat people that's what is his commandment understand our own weaknesses and sins and control them by his power for that power he is asking us to wait so your daily mental and emotional health influences how you think and feel and behave in a daily life our emotions from fear worry anxiety anger and forgiveness jealousy pride ego are harmful for our spiritual health they will harm our spiritual spirit and soul and they will weaken our our soul we are weak we are day by day we are becoming weak actually when we check not physically we are weak we are mentally weak maybe physically we are strong but still mentally weak why you know because as your characters are growing like how we are born born in this world you will be 
mentally weak my friends understand we have to discipline our daily life without daily dose of prayer for god's strength our soul and spirit will become weak and it will finally affect our body like human body needs nutrients uh, nourishments vitamins proteins fiber healthy carbo uh, carbohydrates in right balanced amount from good healthy food green vegetables fruit and water the word of god and the commandment of god are designed for man spirit health the soul's spiritual health god's commandment are for our our mental health because of our daily life struggle our spirit will be overwhelmed within us that is the truth for each one of you but you will not tell if i ask you no i am fine i am fine that is the only but inside of inside you are not fine so psalms 143:4 says our spirit will be overwhelmed within us our hearts will be distressed and so we should ask god in prayer for strength and understanding to resist our anxiety worries anger envy depression bitterness that keeps coming to attack us daily god wants us to have uh, to depend on him like the farmer waits for his uh, uh fruit his pro, uh, his harvest james as james 57 states and yet we have the culture that encourages uh, towards self help self improvement self confidence self protection we have life insurance vehicle insurance and bank accounts and securities for for everything in in our life and we are constantly trying to help ourselves we have many plans and programs in this world to help ourselves isn't it and to improve and protect ourselves and 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 this stuff will not teach us to depend without god without god how can you improve yourself that is why what the world is teaching then why do you need god that's why people are going away from god and those help are not eternal that will not last for a long time and uh, because of all these things they, they they don't want god and god's protection and one of the biggest lies ever propagated in the name of christianity and outside christianity is god helps those who help you might have heard this isn't it never my friends it is not true god does in god will help those who depend on him for his help we are three parts being body soul and the spirit and they are connected and but if one area is weak we are like uh, like three legged stool with one leg broken that is how the people of this world are living only the strength of the spirit can keep us three legs strong we need constant help from god not we need the the strength from god to strengthen our spirit but not the strength from our bank account if people have bank account they are so happy they think they are settled isn't it they are strong they feel many people will see the bank account and they say that they are strong because they can they think that they can face anything that they that comes in that they are going to face in this world that is our pride our pride blinds us to our true condition it makes us think that we have some measures of strength in ourselves yes human spirit do how but we should understand human spirit is strong enough that's the reason john 15:5 jesus said apart from me you can do nothing we need the strength from christ to put on the deeds of our body romans 8:13 says as we get the strength from god through our prayers we can exercise self control powerful fully over all our sinful characters we must go on to know uh, practically our own weaknesses but we should know our own weaknesses so that we can take refuge in lord's strength his strength is mighty his strength is not our strength we need his strength to overcome our daily worries and anxieties and all our sinful self and we should control them trusting god for his help over our problems 
and uh, so we, we should not worry over them i don't know how much you are understanding in reality the strong people are the people who come to see more and more about their weaknesses and sin that awareness drives him to depend on all the more god's strength to be strong in the lord you must know your own weaknesses and pray continually for the strength that's what jesus christ told in matthew 26 41 stay awake and pray lest you will fall in the strength pray for what pray for the strength understanding your weaknesses and if you will get the strength you can definitely control your sinful self instead of trying to avoid suffering seek to learn and grow through go, grow through them keep in mind that god is more interested in making your life holy whether you are christian or non christian god doesn't want anybody to live in his sinful flesh he wants to change the whole humanity he is not his enemy he is not the enemy of the human being he is the savior and the friend of the human being so when we want the happiness in this world through our plans god will never let us please understand god will give us pleasure god will give make our life successful only through his plan whoever you are my friend hallelujah so you have to keep in mind that god is more interested in making your life holy than he is making your life happy because only holiness has eternal life he gives happiness and satisfaction in life only through holiness this is what i am preaching from many years but people of this world as well as the people of god are not able to understand i don't know what is the difficulty jesus christ told seek my kingdom he is telling to whom he is telling to the people who don't have any cloth to wear who don't have any food to eat who don't have any money or shelter he is telling why do you worry where to stay what to eat what to wear seek my kingdom all other things will be added unto that what is his kingdom righteousness 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 of god joy in the holy spirit this is the message to the entire humanity my friends jesus christ came to give jesus christ didn't come to give make a religion called christianity people name us christianity jesus came in this world to transform the people jesus came in this world to show the sins of the people without jesus christ you will never understand your sinful self without reading the bible many of you are not touching the bible isn't it why satan is stopping satan is telling live 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 happily your friends the whole world is enjoying go enjoy the world <laughs> this christian nuts are telling <laughs> there is life after death it seems who was in the <laughs> live live happily read that is the reason i told you my friends before jesus christ was born prophecy was there and he is born and people have seen and the people who have seen has written the bible it is not an assumption or a story by the leading of the holy spirit people have written the godly people have written the bible and many won't read the bible because you will understand your sins you want to enjoy your sin you will not go along my friends please understand hallelujah wonderful jesus so you will never get satisfaction you will never get joy in your going humble down before god god wants to what is the difficulty i don't understand many people will tell you obedience is very difficult why for young people to obey parents it is difficult they, because they want to live the way they want because the sins of their flesh are growing they want to smoke they want to drink they want to have sex with girls they'll go from the house they where they are going parents are not knowing parents will think they are in the school or college where they are god knows but 
God will bring them by trust. If you have such, a, such children at home, don't worry. Wait upon the Lord. You change, they will change. Or if you have a husband or, or a son who is going far away from God, don't worry. If you stand for Christ, God will bring your family people. You and your family will be saved. Hallelujah. No need to worry. Today they may say all the tarle mat. You need the strength to hear. That's all. Your prayer. Your earnest life. Because God is living. He is not living for Christians. God is not a Christian God. God is the God of all, God, the whole world. People don't know. Hallelujah. Wonderful God. And his word in Isaiah 58, 14. And uh, Psalms 37, 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. If you are delighting in yourself and in this world, write it there, you will never get the satisfaction in your ways, my friend. Come back. Those who are going in your way, come back. God is telling this morning. Many youngsters who are going to hear this message through the record, I am talking to you also. We are not Christian nuts. We have left our job and accepted God's calling and I am standing here today to serve God, to give the people a good life. Hallelujah. Wonderful God. Come back to God, my friends. Never say that obedience is difficult. Many, many of you are telling and thinking in your heart that obedience is difficult. Never. First you remove that negativity. You can obey. It is for your good. If you are obeying, I don't get anything. Or your parents won't get anything. Or your friends won't get anything. You yourself will be blessed. Understand? If you are enjoying with your friends, Tomorrow where they are, you don't know. You, will, you two will be in their same place when, when you are in your misery. They are not going to come and help. Please understand. Today they may be there with you to enjoy. They may be promising, I am with you. But only God will be with you. God's people will be with you, with you my friends. Understand. And Proverb 21, 21 says, Whoever pursues righteousness and love, Finds life and prosperity and honor. And Psalms 34, 15 says, The eyes of the Lord are on righteousness and his ears are attentive to their cry. Whose cry? Who wants to live a righteous, cry, a righteous life? Many people will pray. Many people will cry and ask God why we are going through what we are going through. But they, don't, they cannot change their life. They will be crying. But God's Years are on the righteous people's cry. So who are the recipients of this renewed strength? God is counseling. We need a new strength every day. So who are the recipients of their, this renewed strength? Is it all men in general? No. Or is it those who pray casually for the strength? Many of you are casually praying. You are casual in prayer. That's the reason, my friends, you don't get strength. Many of you are telling, I am praying. If I ask, I am praying. I am praying. But no self-control. When a problem comes, you are the same. When a fire comes in your, in your life, you are the same. When a fight comes in your, your life, you don't have any strength. Isn't it? And, you, and if I ask, I am praying. That is just a casual prayer. The real, sincere prayer. Just like the farmer has sown his seeds and waiting for the latter and the former rain. He wants the crop because that is his livelihood. So he is earnestly waiting for the rain. Are you waiting in such a way for the strength? No, my friends, I can assure. You don't want to control. That's why you are not controlling. Why you are crying and telling that I am praying. But still I don't have strength to, suffer, to, to, to control your, your flesh. That means you are doubting on God's strength. The strength is the, the strength. Or the power that has raised Jesus Christ from the death. Which has raised the Lazarus from the death. You should understand. This is not our human power. How many people are living with the, the, the self-will and the willpower. Willpower itself has got power. Then how about God's power my friends? And what is your prayer you are telling? I don't believe. 
You may tell that sister, pastor, I am praying. I don't believe. If you are really, sincerely, honestly praying and waiting for God's power, just like how we are waiting, James 5.7 says, like the farmer. Farmer has to first to, to, to plow the land. Have you plowed your land? You want a righteous life? First of all, you think. You want to live like Jesus Christ in this world? You want to love the people who hate you? Think. 100% it is not true. That is the reason you are not getting the strength. So, only, uh, um, so this text, Isaiah 40, 31, is very specific. It says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Not all men. They that wait upon. They that wait upon. That is the difference. The farmer has sown his seed and waiting for the rain. He wants to see. He has put everything. Manure. He has invested everything on his land and waiting for the rain. In the same way, are you doing? No. Hallelujah. So only those that wait upon the Lord, they are the people who has understood that by the human strength they cannot face the life struggle. They are the people who have realized and understood that they need the strength from God to change their life. They are the people who are ready to change. To wait has the idea of looking. Wait means what? See, we are waiting, looking patiently. We are looking patiently. The same way we are looking patiently for the strength. So looking forward and, and the wait has the idea of looking forward and expecting and desiring that God would strength. Uh, God will uh, would strength, uh, uh, will send the strength like the farmer is waiting. So the seed of joy, all those seed might have sown. What are the crop you are expecting? Or what are the seeds you have, you have sown? The fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5.22 Love, joy, peace, patience, meekness, faithfulness, self-control. Have you sown these seeds? And then are you waiting? You should know where you need self-control. Hallelujah. And to wait for the Lord for the strength implies that we recognize that we couldn't save ourselves. To wait upon the Lord for strength implies that we recognize our weakness. And really, uh, that's the story of every child of God. We recognize our misery outside Christ and God comes to us with the gospel. He teaches us about our sin and our misery. He teaches us about the punishment. Those who are doubting Jesus Christ and all what I am teaching, start reading the Bible. Without studying the Bible, you cannot criticize me and criticize the people who are working for, sin, for God sincerely. Without studying the word, you cannot tell that there is no hell and heaven. With the worldly knowledge, you are commending people. With the worldly knowledge, you are commending the gospel of Jesus Christ. You cannot. So he teaches us that our sin and our misery, he teaches us about the punishment that is due to sin. How do you get the fear? When you read, you can understand. Where is your life outside Jesus Christ? He teaches us that today why I am like this? Because I read Bible <coughs> so many times. So many times. The day God has touched me from that day. So many Bible. Those days, the Bible, there was no mobile. We couldn't uh, download it in the mobile. Bible. I have read so many Bible. So many Bibles were torn. That many times I have read the Bible. Many people will tell, one time I have read and I, you have kept to know. Keep reading. That's the reason I got the fear of God. Keep reading, keep reading, keep reading. Then you will understand your sin in detail. Then you will understand what will happen if you live with your own sin. Then what, you will understand what Jesus Christ is talking. Then you will understand Jesus Christ is not to establish a Christianity for you, a religion for you, to save you. Then you will automatically renounce your pleasure. Many of you cannot leave the pleasure because you don't know the after effect of your pleasure of sin. You are hardly reading the word. Isn't it? That is the truth. So Jesus teaches us that our help and the deliverance. And he teaches us that uh, 
uh, he he so we will understand what god almighty expect from a man people are only expecting so without reading the bible you think that yes it is god has to bless me it is god's duty to bless, bless me you will only understand with the worldly knowledge you will understand only the duty of god you will never understand you have a personal duty what is your duty to obey god and live as ecclesiastic says so god god expect from us to trust him first and and he expect our transformation and our daily preparation for our eternal life those who wait upon the lord are those who are convinced that they cannot go by themselves in the path of righteousness they those who uh, they are those who see and understand their own weakness and uh, they uh, those who understand the consequences of their those weaknesses many of you are not not serious about your sin because you are not studying the word spend some time my friends for studying the word so this promise is for us for every day waiting upon the lord this promise gives us comfort and confidence in our weakness and the midst of uh, in the midst of all our life difficulties for the child of god who struggles with sin the child of god who struggles with the difficulties of life this is the promise and this promise is sure but how often we neglect to see our own sinful self and how often we neglect to wait upon the lord god wants us to recognize our weaknesses see your mistake is please whoever is telling obedience is hard i personally want to to suggest you keep reading or whom who are whomever you are keep reading the word and whomever you are meeting you should tell them to keep reading the word of god they can read any other book any other book they can read but bible isn't it? just see them how many books they may be reading the paper also from first page to the last page they will read and um, they will see all the go, the 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 channel in the in the, in the in the tv news channel whatever but they can't read bible hallelujah because the word of god is sharper than any other double edged sword and word of god is living Hebrews 4:12 says word of god is living and it is active that is the reason you are not ready to read the word satan will stop you it is active it is living when you read something will happen to you my friends believe me believe me those who are not reading the word keep reading the word keep reading the word it is living it is just like jesus is talking to you please understand the words the word that is written in the bible has got anointing if you are happy that if jesus christ comes and talk to you, you may be happy oh jesus christ could have come and talk to me the same thing will happen if you start reading the bible do you know that hebrews 4:12 says the word of god is living and it is active and it is sharper than double edged sword it will go inside of your heart pierce inside and separate the spirit and the soul understand my friends keep reading why you are not touching have to force yourself and start reading the word then you can see that you will get the fear of god hallelujah so this is the same promise that jesus christ himself gives us in matthew 11 28 through 30 he says come to me all that labor and heavy laden i will give you rest ah come and learn from me you are you are struggling so much in this world you are studying you are working earning money at the end of the day do you have peace and satisfaction from what you are doing no is the answer you may not agree you may not say yes to me this morning but i know the answer is no when you are weary and heavy laden don't just swallow in your weariness but go to jesus christ he will give you rest that's the way god works in your life and he makes us secure in our uh, we are, he will uh, he makes us Uh, uh he makes us to sense our weaknesses and when we keep reading the word that is the reason i told you and god has 
created us in that way and make us aware of complete dependence upon him and so i'll come to the final point to rejuvenate our body and to keep in good shape one must eat well exercise well and rest properly and sleep properly but we should also understand for our human body yes we should take good food we should have good exercise at the same time all those are caring only the body we have to care our spirit so the human body must be treasured and care more than material things and possession inner peace is how we keep our spirit protected soul should be protected from the the troubles and chaos around us it is our individual responsibility to keep our atmosphere peace first we must be that peace should be created within ourselves this inner peace help us to keep strong in the face of stress and uh, adversity any time you are stressful go to god and talk to him and tell that what you are going through and check in yourself what is happening at the same time not only you are talking to god at the same time you should see what is happening sometimes you will be having that anger towards someone revenge towards someone you should check in yourself what is happening in your heart okay you should know that they are not good should i strength the god help me control all these all these all these character help me trust you go to god and pray the peace that you get you will never get from anywhere this is the soul's food my friends are you taking today is sunday you are waiting when i will stop this message you will go home you want to take rest you want to make good food and eat are you caring your spirit are you caring your soul you never do that even i told you once a uh, one holy day if you get you want to rest you want to eat good food this is all the human being will think you will never think about you you are resting for your body you should understand to rest for your spirit you have to spend some time with god you have to spend some time with the word of god and the world, the godly people you should understand those who are resting on sunday you are resting in a worldly way for your body not to rest for your spirit go to your room with the bible pray to god try to meet godly people never avoid the godly people to meet on your holy days hallelujah so this inner peace is our choice it should be developed by trusting god and walking in his ways it is a training it, we need the training to have self control you should get biblical truth into your soul regularly by hearing reading and studying and meditating on the word spending uh, your whole day out in the office with the worldly people and or you are or with the tv people will come back from the office let to relax before the tv and the reading newspaper and all other books you know at the end of the day you are weary check it is not your physical body is weary your spirit is weary your soul is weary you don't understand if your soul is strong your physical body will be strong my friends at the end of the day or however work you how much ever work you do in this world you can do any work you will never say that you are tired if the spiritual strength is there hallelujah so spending the whole day out in the office with the worldly people and listening to tv and reading the newspaper and all other books at the end of the day negativity wears in your mind and emotionally and uh, you so you should set time and space to go to god by reading the word and prayers and meeting with the believers please in your holy days you want to be with your family members <laughs> enjoyment or you will go and meet your worldly family members hmm little time worldly family members but you will never go to do you go you should make it a practice you should go to godly people on your holy holy days 
I told you, once you have come to Christ, once you are born again, baptized, you have an extended family, that is church. You always want to be with your cousins, your relatives, your family members. Whom you avoid is nuts, spiritual nuts. Isn't it? Ayo, amman nodak hok tare, tande nodak hok tare, pastor nodak hok baad, pastor is a nut. Alva, ya tumpa de nae, amman nodi bati ni, elli, uur elli. Don't meet pastor. Ayo, if you go to pastor, full enjoyment only will go off. <laughs> I want to enjoy today. That's the reason I have seen. Every day I may get many calls, but holidays I will not get. Because they get some advice from me. <laughs> that day they want to so uh, they want to enjoy exclusively for themselves. <laughs> Even if I, I I I call or message also, I don't think they will take or reply me. <laughs> they will keep it. That's not correct, my friends. Understand. It's a practice. Every day. Meet with your spiritual friends, godly friends, pastor. Hallelujah. Or, you will be like three legged stool with one leg broken all through your life. Let's close our eyes and